hello and welcome to another video on beginner tutorial series and in today's video we are going to discuss one power query function and the function which we are going to use is table dot select rows the power query function table dot select rows takes a table and a condition and returns as a table so basically whenever you do filtering you actually end up using select row so it's help in filtering Another important thing which we do not realize that it can not only help in filtering the current table, it can actually help in filtering the data of other table and bringing in the data into this table using those tables. So like lookup and inside the same table, it can also do lookup, which we typically do using earlier, but those operations could be really costly. Please remember table dot select rows is going to bring in the complete table in a column and then going to filter it in such cases. So I'm going to take up some example, but let's take the example for the purpose here, which has been given here. So one of the example which has been given here is basically I have a table with the customer IDs, name and phone number. And I want to filter the customer ID to the usual filter case, customer ID two, and it's going to return me the table, which is having the customer ID two. The another example which I have is basically uh, for each not text dot contains and we say not so the name should not contain B. So it's going to return all the names which doesn't contain B. So we can do the filtering uh, like this. So those of you who have used the filter in the power query knows this functionality. So let's go ahead to the power BI and try this out. So let me jump out of the power BI and in power BI into the home tab, I have option to go to power query under the transform data, transform data, transform data, and the power query is opening. So what we are going to do is first of all, let's take an example with one of my existing table. So I have this item table and I want to filter certain values. So one of the easiest way you could have done it. So you go to the brand, let's say I want to filter the brand, you uncheck all and you say brand one and you say, okay. What did you see here? You see table dot select rows change type each brand one brand equals to brand one. So filter rows. So the filter rows step uses that, but let's go ahead and manually try to do that. So let me cross this step and in power query, that's easy for us that we can cross it. So I'll go ahead and write down this code. So I'll let me open it and say advanced editor. And in the advanced editor, let me go till the end end of the line, comma, enter, and let me call it underscore filter. And that's how I'm using it. So every time I create a step, I give an underscore name so that you can differentiate between what I'm writing down and what power query has automatically written. So table dot select rows. And when we do the table, then we need to use the last step name. So I go here and do this and what I want to do is filter. So filter function each because we are going to use the column name. So each brand equals to brand one's condition. And then I need to return this step. If I don't return, then it's not going to work. So I should always return the last step in, in this case. So we got brand one. And because I'm able to see it here, I can simply go ahead and change it to brand two in the function and can press enter or click outside and I'll get it. Now, same way I could have changed this filter where to say item space ID let's say greater than 10. I'm getting everything which is item ID greater than 10. So this is how I can use it. So let me close this out. Now another thing which I was telling you that I can use it to bring certain data across table. So let's say I want to bring in brand here from the item table. The join here is basically item ID, item ID. Now the best way is that I merge these two tables and then bring in, and we do have discussed some power query functions which can do it. But table.select can also do it, but it is going to be really, really slow to do all those things. 
because you're going to bring the table in every step so let me tell you how to do it but don't try to use it on a bigger set of tables it is just for your learning purpose that i'm showing you this step so let's say i want to bring in brand merge is the better way and then you select the column what you want so here we can say table dot select rows and what table i want to select i want to select a table which is outside so i can simply give the name item for each now here item id of the item table equals what i need i need now how do it differentiate this is the item id which is here in this step versus item id so to do that let me change the code a little bit let me say let enter underscore item equals to item id which is the item id from the sales table of the current row and then let me write down underscore table equals to table dot select rows the code which i've already written now this code is going to give me a filter table when i say each item id of item table equals to underscore item which is the current rows item from the sales table once i got the item id filtered data i need to take list dot max to find out the one brand which i need and because it is one to many relationship i only have one brand table dot select rows is right now returning a table so at the end of it i'm going to write down here brand which is my column and then i press another enter and in and let me return underscore table and let's try out what does it give okay so it gives me brand now same way within the table we can operate also but it's going to be really costly let's take an example let's say i want to count how many brands how many items having the same brands first of all i need to have something to tell me what is my last step table name so i go to the advanced editor and copy my last step table name which is change type i go here and now i'm going to add a custom column and here in this column i'll say let's say count and let me start with let and after that i need a variable which is basically underscore brand now because i want a brand and brand to be equated with the brand equals to brand so that step brand then the next step i need a table which is i'm going to take a count in this time so i need a table and i'll say table dot select rows now from where this is going to get a table the table is the last step table name which i copied now here the table brand the brand is from the table change type equals to my brand which is in the current row and i need to use each so each brand in the table change type equals to the brand in this one and this is going to return me a table and what i want to do is count rows so one of the ways i do list dot count or i can say table dot row count and then i can use in the next line in and then i can return table i missed a comma here that's why it's giving error and let me and let me say okay and as you can see it gives the count so the for brand 10 it is saying that we have five such rows which is having brand 10 so let's quickly filter brand 10 and check it out we actually have five rows so within the table operation across table operation it can do now one interesting use case which is there in microsoft fabric in data flow gen 2 which i am using those who are watching the microsoft fabric series to do the incremental etl now to do the incremental etl i am using table dot select rows let me take you through that example so let me jump onto the microsoft fabric here i already opened one example if you see on this last step there are filter rows coming in using a max state now this max state is not coming from 
a just a variable it is basically we i have a table which is going to maintain multiple table right now this might have only one table but this table is going to manage more than one table and all the tables data and the last loaded date would be there and what i want based on my selection of the table i should be able to filter out the data in the next run greater than the last collection date data so if you i go to the advanced editor of this sales data sales fact right click advanced editor you see first of all i'm using table dot select rows incrm for each table name so from that table i'm going to get my table name so this is going to give me table and then i append the column name now this is a list so list dot max of that collection date now and then i'm using that as a filter again in the select rows and in this way i'm ensuring using a log table i'm getting only the incremental data so there are many such use cases so why don't you go ahead and try these things out and do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series thanks for watching this video thank you